Hello and welcome back to another edition of Open Air Atheist. I am James Theodore Stibble III and today we're going to be interviewing a Satanist. Uh, we'll call him Subject S and uh, just to kind of get a different uh, worldview uh, on my show and uh, what other people believe uh, other than Christians and atheists. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so let's let's talk about what what is it that Satanists believe? Um, a loaded question in and of itself, because to believe requires faith, and Satanists do not. Okay, so what it, what is faith. it? Right. So what is it that you would want people, my viewers, to know about Satanism? Uh, Satanist philosophy proposes that instead of believing in faith, faith that some people should instead live their lives with doubt, obviously, you know, life requires, you know, a small amount of faith to, you know, get on an elevator, but nothing should be taken without any logical evidence that it will, in fact, work. Sure, you can believe that an elevator will work because you know about safety regulations and investigation bureaus that could help it, but should you believe that if you step off of a cliff, because an ancient text says you will survive, that is ridiculous. You should so, base your life on doubt rather than faith. It sounds very rational. Uh, it sounds kind of like atheism, really. Uh, not that atheism is a religion, but um, it, it sounds a lot like, like us. Test, you know, test everything, doubt everything. Uh, yes, it is very similar. However, Satanism differs because it there have been many people who ask why it isn't called humanism, but Satanism needs to be called Satanism because it is the renunciation of faith. Now, this isn't necessarily directed at any particular faith, it's the renunciation of all faith and faith as a concept in general, but it was made in America. Obviously, Christianity is kind of the focus, and they chose, you know, Satan the adversary of Christianity. Also, the name Satan is supposed to mean adversary in and of itself. So, the problem is there are many people in the world who could be atheists, but they need that religious influence in their life. So, Satanism was created by Anton LaVey to give people the dogma and spiritualism that people need while without giving them lies and a joke. Interesting. So, let me ask you your personal view. Do you do you believe uh, in any kind of uh, deity? Do you believe that Satan exists? Uh, maybe a being, a spiritual being maybe, or any kind of being called Satan? No, I do not believe in Satan. The church does not believe in a being known as Satan. Okay, so... Uh, let me ask you, what are your views on morality? Morality, like the myths that profess it, is a myth in and of itself. It is humans just trying to label things as good and bad. It is a waste of time, because by labeling something evil, you get to stand up at your high horse and point at them, rather than labeling it with something accurate and doing something about it. You get to stand in the moral right, which makes you feel like you've accomplished something, but you haven't. It's also arbitrary unless you base it on a god, and there's too many gods to figure out which one's right. So, would you say that you take a, a utilitarian approach? I do. Yeah. Um, is there like a general uh, consensus in Satanism? Uh, like what most people believe. Yes, or, there or is a satanic golden rule. It is treat others as they would treat you. Wow. That sounds that sounds like a ripoff from the New Testament. We're, think? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think obviously, this one is a renunciation of faith. Therefore, they are taking things from the Bible and making them the opposite. One of our symbols is, funnily enough, an upside-down cross. I mean, the irony's been pointed out to me because that's also a holy symbol and the symbol of St. Peter, but also 
Another symbol is the upside down pentagram representing Baphomet rather than the white magic symbol that Wiccans use, which is the right side up pentagram representing Adam. Do you, do you think that there could be any kind of um, deity, and if so, uh, you know, a creator or a god or... A, a creator? A, yeah. Uh, do you think that, um, you know, maybe life just evolved and really we have no use for a creator? Or do you think that maybe there's a good chance that there could be? Um, what, what's your views on that? What, what do you think? A creator. As we look around this world, there seems to be absolutely no direction. If there were such a creator, you'd have to wonder his motive. If there was so, such a motive, he would have to be very whimsical, capricious, or apathetic. Because there seems to be no direction, no consistent goal trying to be reached at any given point. Satanists do not believe in a creator, I don't know don't care to find out if there is such a creator, I certainly would not bow to anyone who created a world like this. What do you, what do you think the likelihood of, of uh, Christianity or a, or a religion like Christianity actually being true? Hmm. I've thought such things before. Christianity in and of its... well, the concept of the God from Christianity seems to be a contradiction, so it logically couldn't exist that way. And well, explain the Bible that. What do you being followed? What do you mean by that? What do you mean a contradiction? I'm one of. I subscribe to the old classic philosophy of can God create a rock too big for him to carry? Actually, I had someone answer that one just no. I'm like, but wait make sense because if he can't then he's not omnipotent if right he can, and then, then he can't then he's also not omnipotent. then sometimes they change it to would he create a rock uh, that he can't move and they'll say that's really the question but that really what they're doing I think is avoiding the question yeah. um, what do you think about the God of Christianity well the Bible doesn't seem consistent it has the, a lot of different writers the philosophies completely different in various different parts of it, and there's absolutely no proof that it hasn't been tampered with. And as if to joke about the fact that there's no proof that it hasn't been tampered with, I've even had some Christians tell me that there's a line somewhere in there that says that if it was tampered with, God would smite them and then immediately change it back so it can't be. They called it the curse of the Bible. And it's like, why couldn't a man just write that down? And with that said, everything in it is as if it's just written up by a man. Well, let me ask you, uh, uh, Random Theology, uh, he's a, a Christian apologist um, on YouTube, and uh, he you made a comment. Yours? 